Hello. You know, uh, on this planet that we are living in on earth, you as a person, you can do nothing meaningful if you don't first deal with the question of death. So many people have not been able to do anything because they, they fear that they might be killed. Men and women are unable to speak up because when you speak up, you come out and uh, not everybody will like you and not everybody will be able to agree with you. And many people have not been able to establish businesses, establish uh, churches and ministries. People have not been able to establish even their own lives because of fear of, of death. And you know, when, when you are not able to, uh, to deal with the question of death and life, then you're not able to do anything meaningful on earth. People fear to die more than any other thing. And it is the major reason why people are not able to be productive, to be bold enough to do things that they want to do. Because when you try to establish, for example, you try to establish, uh, uh, to establish a, a ministry on earth or a business here on earth, many people are not able to do it because the fear of death creating anything meaningful. I want you to understand that you cannot be able to do anything that has meaning unless you are able to deal with the question of death. When you fear that someone may kill you, when you fear that somebody may, de may decide and determine your time of living up, then you are unable to move out with your strength and with your boldness and who you are will not show up on earth until you have been able to deal with the question of death. Now, for example, my own mother was killed when I was seven years of age. She was bewitched by a witch that was so bold that she announced her death. And she came and uh, after having a dispute with my own mother, she spoke to her and, and, and threatened to kill her. And uh, people were there. There were elders present in that particular meeting because my mother had uh, uh, taken her to the local uh, elders' court. And they uh, determined that my mother had won the case and she was supposed to compensate uh, some of the crops that had been eaten up by our own uh, cows, uh, which she had actually pushed into our shamba deliberately. And so the witch decided to speak uh, in, in the presence of those elders without fearing anybody. And the witch said, we shall see whether you shall be able to eat of those products that I'm going to pay. And within a short time, my mother began to vomit the same things that the, the, the cow piece that the witch had threatened uh, that she's not going to eat of it. And within uh, a few hours, my mother was taken ill and critical. And she was taken to Machakos General Hospital, where she was hospitalized. But they tried to diagnose what was her sickness. And there was no sickness that was found. And so they referred her to Kenyatta General Hospital, where the, the, the doctors there recommended that an operation be carried out. Uh, to see what was the problem with her stomach. When they did uh, the surgery, uh, the operation wound uh, could not heal and could not uh, join together. And so within a week, my mother was dead. People in the village knew what had happened, but nobody could have, uh, could have the courage to face the witch because otherwise they would become the next online in the customers of that witch until seven, uh, five years later when Jesus appeared unto me and he spoke to me and I began to get courage because I was asking myself questions. If someone can determine when another person is to die, then how will I even live? Because if they can plan for a grown up when they should die and actually they die and, they, and we bury them, then how will me, a child, grow up and what will be my confidence 
in the period that I'll be growing up, that I will be able to live my life in full and nobody will tamper with my life as long uh, for the days that God has given me. How am I sure that I will fulfill my days? But I want you to understand, five years later, Jesus appeared unto me and spoke to me about what I will become when I grow up. And so I, I knew that I would definitely grow up. The witches will not be able to kill me. Seven years again after that incident, Jesus appeared to me in Arusha, Tanzania, and he spoke to me in a period of two hours. One thing that I want to share with you today is that it is possible to overcome the fear of death. Listen to these scriptures. In Hebrews chapter number, 20, number, number 2 and verse 14 and 15, the Bible recognizes that the fear of death keeps people in total bondage all the days of their lives and they are unable even to uh, do anything in life that is meaningful. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had, pow had, had power of death, that is the devil. You see, the devil had the power of death. Then, when did that become his power? When Adam sinned, and he became under the law of uh, sin and death. And the devil became a custodian of that because uh, Adam had given over power to the devil. Verse 15 says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now listen carefully. Death binds people and keeps them in bondage unless you're able to know for sure. That doesn't matter whether somebody shoots you, whether somebody decides to uh, accost you in any place and uses any form of weapons, unless you are very sure that nothing can kill you, then it will be not possible for you to be bold enough. I look at politicians who cannot speak their minds because someone will kill them. I look at doctors who cannot speak their minds. I look at judges who cannot judge correctly because somebody may kill them. I look at people, leaders, who fear death terribly and so they are not able to be their own man because you fear someone may plan for you. I want to introduce you to a life that is fearless, to a life that you cannot be killed by anyone, to a life that you can say what you want, the way you want it, and be sure that nobody will take away your life. Listen carefully. We know something. That is why we speak the way we do. And that is what I want to introduce you to. That in Jesus is a different place from in church. And not tomorrow you are preparing to go to church. But church is not Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, is a person and is a place. He is a person in that he can come into us by his spirit. He is a place in that we, all of us, can get into him. When you are in him, you are in his kingdom. God has saved us from the kingdom of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of, into the marvelous light of the kingdom of his dear son. It is a place. It is a kingdom. Unless you deal with the question of death, you are unable to do anything meaningful in life. Because when you begin to do business, you'll be faced with the ancients of death. They want to kill you, to take away your star of business, to continue with the same business in your place, in your star, in your name. But you, they want to take you away. The same to any other thing that anybody may engage in. Now look at this. People in the kingdom of darkness, before they establish any business on earth, they do a few things. Number one, 
they enter into a covenant with death and in agreement with hell. One man in Tanzania, uh, he was a, a musician. He had just began to, uh, to engage in music, in the music industry. And of course, if you want to go higher in those, in the dimensions of music, politics, uh, business, um, in, in, in those ventures that have a lot of money in them, the death, you will encounter death. It will come because it is sitting there and guarding the way into prosperity. And it thinks that it is still in authority. But I want to show you a few things that you will understand when Jesus says you are past death into life. There is something that Jesus is saying. Now, uh, the, 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 the word of God tells us that some people have entered into a covenant with death and they are in agreement with hell. You cannot do anything meaningful with your life on earth until you have been able to settle the question of death so that you'll be sure that you have your years with you, that you have your, your days with you. You can dictate what you do and no man can be able to dictate what you say and they, 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 they threaten that if you say anything contrary, you are dead meat. I want to introduce you to a world where you cannot be killed by anything. Nothing can kill you because you stand here, you say things, they hate you, and yet they can do nothing about it. They want to kill you, but they can't. They try to lay their hands on Jesus but they couldn't do it because his time had not yet come. And even when Jesus was about to go to the cross, he said, nobody takes away my life. I lay it down myself. I have commandment to lay it down and to take it up. I want you to introduce you to that place where you can speak your mind, declare things, do things without fear of anybody that can challenge you with death. Isaiah 28 and verse 15. The Bible says, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. I want you to understand that scripture properly. That there are some men alive today who have been able to make a covenant with the death. They are standing where they are standing. Their boldness comes from a covenant they have with the death. Death, they have agreed it will not take them. And they have given some people as a ransom on their behalf. Some have sacrificed their children. Some have sacrificed and given to death their parents. Some have given out their wives to death so that they may live. Ezekiel 13, verse 17. Will you keep alive those who should not live and kill those who should not die? So, and preserve your own source. I want you to understand Isaiah 28, verse 15 well. Because the people have said we have an agreement with death and we are in covenant with death and we are in agreement with hell. What is hell and what is death? Death is not an event. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit that has an understanding. It can go, it can walk, it can ride, it can move in a vehicle, it can go from one place to another, it can be spoken to, it can be sent, it can be taught how to do something, it can be programmed, it can be sent, and it can go to a place. Death can enter into a place. One time, the sons of the people and inside the pot. So death can enter into food, and when somebody eats death, they can die. Death can enter into a house. Death can die. They were eating, 
the men, uh, the sons, one of the sons of the prophet said, Alas, my master, death is in the pot. In Revelation, we see that death can ride a horse. I saw another horse, a pale horse, and its rider was death, and hell followed closely. Uh huh. We see that death can ride on a horse. It can drive a horse. You know, horses were like the vehicles today. So death can drive a vehicle into an accident. Death can be a driver of a vehicle. It can be a pilot. It can be uh, a pilot of a ship or an aeroplane. Death. And once it does uh, so, hell follows closely. Look at it. Look at, look at this. Because death is a spirit. It can enter into a covenant with a man. You have said, we have made a covenant with death. Isaiah 28 and verse 15. Now, these covenants with death, they have several tenets in them. Now they say that I make a covenant. Either there is a mediator, there is an officiator of that covenant. It can be a witch doctor or it can be any agent of they agree that you shall not be killed, but they will protect you. But they protect you at a price. Either you give them your children. You can either give your children who are born or your children who are not yet born. Some of the politicians that you see today who have no children, they gave out their children before they got them. Some of the... Uh, great business people that you see today all cannot marry. They, they, get, they, they sacrifice their wives and they agreed, they are in agreement with hell that they would never marry. So they cannot marry. Even if you force them, they can't. They can't because they have sacrificed that or for the sake of the wealth that you see them with. That is why the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added no sorrow with it. Because if you want to be rich, in the ways of the devil, they will have sorrow in your riches. You will have no wife, or you may have no children, or you will have uh, to sacrifice all your children, not say any child, or you not give birth to any child, you can sacrifice your uterus, or any of these things that are so despicable. Listen, men have made a covenant with hell so that they may become something on earth. Again, Isaiah 28, verse 18, we have their verdict. Of those who have made a covenant with, with, with death and, a, and an agreement with hell. Isaiah 28, verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. It shall be broken. It shall not stand. Those men who have made a covenant with death, that covenant will be broken. Even if you are a cabinet secretary, even if you are an MP, you are an MCA, you have made a covenant with death, that covenant shall be broken. Isaiah 28 and verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. Glory to God. The, their covenants will not stand. It doesn't matter. That is why we have a lot of bloodshed in the electioneering year. Why? Because many politicians are in agreement with death and they are in agreement with hell. They have a covenant with death and they have a covenant with hell. Many, many, many politicians do not serve Jesus Christ as their personal savior and Lord. They are not saved and they are not lorded by Jesus Christ. They have their Lord who is the Antichrist spirit and the devil. And so they kill to remain in their positions of power, in their positions of authority, in their positions, and they are there in, in, in conformity with the plans of the devil to do his will. And now the country of Kenya is being liberated from the hands of our, our, our parliamentarians who are devil worshippers, and it is coming into a place where men of God, children of the kingdom of, of God, 
are going to ascend into power. Because the Bible says, when the righteous reign, the people rejoice. Think about it. Sela. Think about it. In, in, in Isaiah 28, 18, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your co agreement with hell shall not stand. When the flowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. This is what the Lord God is saying. The those who have made a covenant with death, and they are in agreement with hell, and they are sitting pretty, they are feeling secure. When the overflowing scourge comes, they are saying it shall not come, it shall not take us away, it shall not flood us. We are covered by falsehood. Let me tell you, God is saying it shall flood you and tread you down underfoot. Ask the witch who killed my mother. The day that I knew what I'm teaching today, I became a tormentor of that witch until she died and we buried her together with our associates. The same thing shall happen to the demonic politicians who have been sacrificing Kenyans so that they may remain in power. The same power that killed the bear and the lion in the field. It is the same power that led Saul to death and killed Goliath and enthroned David. We are coming. We are coming. We know something. And God has prepared us specially for this generation. We are like the wind. You cannot know where we are. Elijah used to appear and disappear. That is why when he, he taught Ob Ob uh, Obadiah, go and tell Ahab that I am here and I have come to present myself to him. Obadiah fell down on his face and he said, oh my Lord, please, why are you endangering my head? When I go away from here, the spirit of the Lord will carry you away from here. And when the king comes here, you will not be here. And I will be killed. But Elijah said, no, today I'm ready to reveal myself to him. So go and speak to your master. So unless I reveal myself to you, <laughs> you will think that you are dealing with a small boy. You are mistaken. Unless I reveal myself to you, you can, you can come to where I am and not see me. can meet with me, you can meet with my vehicle, you can meet with my car, you can meet with me in, the, in an aeroplane and not know me and not really understand that you met with me. Why? Because I'm a heavenly man. I'm like the wind. I blow uh, from whichever direction, but you cannot tell where I am going to. That is why when it comes to hitting hard, I hit hard without fear of anything, because no weapon fashioned against me shall ever prosper. And every tank, including your tank, if it raises against me in judgment, that tank, I will condemn it. I can either choose to condemn it to dry up in your own mouth or to be eaten by worms when you are still speaking. And that tank cannot stop what God is doing in our time. Listen carefully. Men and women of God, it is high time to deal with death first so that you can be bold enough. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said that death, there are keys of death and there are keys of hell. You, I told you that death can be told, move and it will move. Death shall be taken in the last day and thrown into the lake of fire. It is a person. It has a personality. It is a spirit. Death is not an event. It is a spirit that you can overcome or it overcomes you. Okay? Now, listen. This is the first episode. I will be coming in the uh, episode two and three. And uh, the last one will be episode four of overcoming death. And you shall understand what I mean. And you shall see there is no need of going to a witch doctor because a witch doctor will die. There is a better person that you can go to and you should not fear 
to die because there is no possibility of such. He moves you past where death waits for people when they are going into their destiny. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Now listen carefully. Jesus is the one that was dead, was, was, that is alive. He was dead, but now he is alive forevermore. He will never die again. Death cannot touch him. And he is the one who says, I have the keys of hell and of death. But in Hebrews chapter number two, we read that Jesus came to deliver them who through in Hebrews that Jesus uh, came to deliver those who all their lifetime in uh, through fear of death were subject to bondage. And in Revelation chapter uh, 1 and verse 18, he says he has the keys of hell and of death. Now, these keys are the ones that we use to bind and to loose. Death has no power over you if you can understand what I am teaching today in episode 1. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want you to understand what that means. That Jesus has the keys of hell and of death. And here he says that I shall give you. He had not yet got those keys. He says I shall give you in future. Then he went to hell and he striked the devil. He, he crushed his head. According to the scriptures in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 15, uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, that the seed of the woman shall crush the head, serpent. Jesus crushed that head. He took away the keys of the kingdom. That, those were the keys of death and of hell. When you have no fear of death, you are able to live your life with a meaning. The keys we have re received from Jesus Christ are the keys of hell and keys that we have received. Keys. Of, uh, of hell and of death. They are the keys of the kingdom that we bind death on the earth and it is bound. We lose life and release it to work on earth and it is released. You say in the name of Jesus Christ, I shall not die, but I shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And even if they try to kill you by enemies, they shall not hurt you. Did you not hear Jesus Christ say, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and they shall by no means hurt you. Luke chapter number 10. And verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and it shall by no means hurt you. Kenya has men and women who death cannot work in them. So when you are threatening people with death, there are those who are killable and there are those who are not killable. We are here until we fulfill our mandate. 
We push it hard. We have a hard face. We hit our faces against anything that has been hitting against men. And we crush you by force. And now that we have begun to poke our nose into the political atmosphere of this country, wait, we are coming. We are breaking the bars of brass. And it doesn't matter who is feeling like you can do anything. When I repel and a stool that is his, his wisdom was not being respected anymore. Alienda Kajinyonga, Aidopel. But when Absalom decided he is not going to kill himself, he was hanged. God spoke to creation. When you follow an, an anointed man of God to kill him, even creation itself begins to stand against you and to kill you. So God spoke to trees. And that day, the forest devoured more than the sword. And one of the trees, a special tree, was spoken to, and it was told, Lenga Vizuri, Absalom is coming. Don't allow him to pass. And it waited, and it allowed the mule to pass under it, and it caught Absalom by the, by the neck, and he was hanged between heaven and earth. He was hanged in between heaven and earth to death. We have the power of death. We can, we, can, we can lock some people out of life and they will go. Ask me how it happens. I know there is a way that we, we that you know the children of the devil, the devil comes to kill, to steal, to kill and destroy. And the children of the devil are killers and destroyers and they steal. If you see anybody that is always stealing or killing or destroying, they are in the ministry of the devil. The kingdom of God, they know how to give life and how to kill. David <laughs> could not wait for Goliath to live another day. He killed him. He was a giant. He was a demon, and he killed it. Thus, there are some people that we are not supposed to allow to live. Because the Bible says, you shall not allow a witch to live. So when we find witches anywhere, whether mchawi ni mwanasiasa, awe ni, 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 ni MCA, ni, ni raisi, ni, ni opposition leader, ni, kama ni mwanga, atapibwa. Kama yeye ni, ni kuromanza, ni mchawi. Tukiachilia mishale yetu katika prayer uh, places zetu. Na sehemu za maombi special. When we release our weapons of war, they hit the target. Ata kama yiko wapi. They hit the target. Wanagonga. And we are out there. In a way, wanajua ji, it was controlled. It was monitored. It moved as though it had a GPRS setting. It can locate the forehead of Goliath and it could not miss. Our weapons of warfare are not cannon. They are mighty in God to demolish strongholds. So we have weapons of warfare. We may not be carrying with us SMGs, AK-47s, pistols. We may not be carrying those things with us, but yet we have weapons of war. We have real weapons of war, little in their abilities. And, you know, there is power in our weapons of war. We use them because our kingdom is not of this world. It's a different kingdom. But that kingdom is able to influence this world in a mighty way. And so, unless you know how to deal with death, you are able to do anything meaningful. What what I teach and I if you try that, we will kill you or something will happen to you. No, you don't interfere. There is a security wall. There is a firewall. 
<laughs> that is around the children of the kingdom. When people come to, to, to do anything to us before our time, <laughs> they don't see us. We, we, they see us in a different world altogether, in a mountain full of fire and chariots of fire, far away from where they are. Mali ambapo risasi yezi fika. Sikia ni kwambie, jamaa moja aliamua kwenda kuwa mchungaji. Akaenda na panga. Hameambia mchungaji ya kwamba achilia mke wangu arudi nyumbani asikuwa kwa maombi ama ni kukata kichwa. Mchungaji ya kamambia kwamba ukati mtu kichwa hapa na mke wako waendi kwa sababu ya kwa maombi. Anaomba mungu. Ya? Yeah? Unaenda sema kwamba hiyo mchungaji alikuwa hana ekima. Hakuna ekima. Hapa ni by force. It is by, by fire. By force. Huyo jamaa akaenda nyumbani and he came back with a panga and he decided to kill the pastor with a panga. He came to the church. Nobody saw him in the church. The pastor was praying. He was kneeling down and his head was down and he was praying and praying and praying and praying. When he opened his eyes after praying, he found a panga, brand new panga, shining kwa sababu ya vile likuwa kali. It was lying down before him. And he woke up and he asked the people there, who has laid this panga here? And nobody had an answer to that. So they continued with uh, the fellowship. After the fellowship, the wife of that man went home. And he found the man there. And the man was saying, did you see what I did to your pastor? I slashed off his head. And the wife was like, what do you mean? My pastor has been preaching just a few minutes ago. He's alive and well. He said, you didn't see even the pang I left there. And the man came to see for himself what had happened. And when he came back, he realized that the pastor was alive. He asked, how can it be? Nili kata kichwa mpaka nika kionoa. Au kata kichwa ya yote. Mungu ananchia of defending his children. And so, and if you are killable, they will kill you. Believe you me. If you are killable, they will kill you in accidents. They will drown you. They will, you know, shoot you or do anything that they can do to cut short your life. You know, we are not in the we are not in the dispensation of Akina Peter and Paul. Them, they were being killed as seeds for, <laughs> for the kingdom. In our generation, we stop the mouths of lions. We render the weapons powerless. We are not sheep for slaughter anymore. We are in the likeness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so when they come, we swallow them. They are buffalo to us. We eat them up. We destroy the angels of the devil like this. Because in these end times, we are the ones that are chasing those who have been chasing the church before. So we are in a different dispensation and dispensation of victory. Are you there, my friend? I behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy, and it shall by no means hurt you. We are not human beings. We are sons of God. <laughs> sons of God are not subject to your sword or to your bunduki. Yeah? You think ya kwamba unatisha watu kwa sababu unaka munduki, ama unaka kapanga yako, ama una kitu fulani hivi yenye unabeba, unafikiria kwamba unatishashia watu wa siongea vila wa kuongea. You are mistaken. Sons of God, unaweza kufanya what you do to other people na uziwawe. Unaweza wa kidnap, ukawapeleka karura forest, ukaenda ukachukua mbunduki yako na ukapiga risasi, na wata kufa. One guy, <laughs> one guy was traveling in Congo just the other day. And as he was traveling, the, 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 the guys who are fighting there, they kidnapped, the, 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 they stopped the, their vehicle and they kidnapped three of them who are putting on some good clothes. And so they took them deep in the forest and they told them to conduct their people in the city to send them money. And the first one was like, I don't have anybody that I can conduct to, to send you money. He was beaten to death by those oligarchs and uh, those evil soldiers in the, who are fighting in Congo. The second one, the same. He said, they have nobody in the, field, in the village, in the, in, the, in, the, in the city that I can conduct to send you money. And he was beaten to death. Then it was the time of the pastor. 
And they asked him, you are a pastor? He said, yes, I am a pastor. Okay, pastor, you have some people in the city? You want you to call them? Huh? You said you are a real pastor. You know this rain. If it rains, we are not going to have any food because it is going to destroy everything here. If truly you are a pastor, we want you to stop the rain. If you stop the rain, we will let you alive. Huh. So the pastor prayed a simple prayer. Father God, let this rain not rain. And that rain never rained. And the guys were like, you mean, your pastor? You're a real pastor? Yes. And even the rebels, they could not kill the pastor. I want you to understand, we are different. Hiyo kakili yako ndogo, na akilile mungu yako nayo, uwezi ukaitumia haribu kile ambacho mungu ametuma duniani. Watu wa mungu eleweni uyu wa. Wanasiasa hawa unaona wezi kuchezea mchawi, Wakiona mchawi wanaogopa, wakiona mganga wanaogopa, sasa wewe una unawaogopa, badala wa kuogope unawaogopa. Nataka uelewe ya kwamba wewe ni zaidi ya mchawi. Nguvu zile ambazo tunabeba ni zaidi ya za wachawi. Sasa nikiongea na staili niongee, nikielewa ya kwamba I have more protection than them. And my protection ni kubwa. <laughs> I can die and resurrect. I can disappear and appear. I can fly. I can be here now. In the next minute, be in a town that is 500 kilometers away from here. One day I was in Nairobi, and I was sleeping at night, and a witch decided to go and bewitch uh, our land, up country. And I was woken up by an angel of the Lord, and he picked me, and we flew. It was around 3 a.m. in the morning. We flew. all the way to my home place and we stood somewhere up in the in the in, in mid hair and i looked at the guy as he was trying to bewitch our land and i told the angel of god i don't want to un to undo what he's doing because i want to see how they do it and i looked at the guy he never saw me but i was seeing him and he did what he was doing. He was also hanging on the air. And he went back. Wakienda kuanga wanafikiri wako peke yao. Tutakutana kwenye hanga huko. Huko huko kwenye anga. Kuna mtu tatoka kwenye mwili. Ujaribu kwenda vila mabi munaenanga usiku kuanga. Umekalia uteo. Ama umefanya ishara zenu. Oke paa. Tutakutana huko. Mimi na malaika wangu. Tutapatana huko. Na kita umana kwa sababu lazima moja akose kurudi kwa mwili. Tutapambania hapo mpaka ubaki huko kwenye ulimwengu huo. Because you have made a covenant with death. Baki huko huko kwa kifo huko. Ubaki huko hell huko. Kwa sababu, lazima. Aita, aita ezekana ya kwamba. Watu wanaenda kuzimu, wanakuja kutawala mbunge. Wanakuja kutawala inji. Wanakuja kutawala uh, maeneo ambao MCS wanasimamia. Wakiwa wanatoka kuzimu. Aita ezekana. Very soon, tutakuwa tunawanasa. Ukiondoka, nasio ile nasa ya, ya chama, apana. Tutakuwa tunawashika mateka. Ukienda utoka kwa mwili. We ni Freemason, Devil Worshipper. We ni wale wanaongea na maro. We ni wale ambao wa, wamezoea kuwanga usiku, waganga wakienyeji, madaruesh, wa, wa, wa siiri, wa somanyota. Ume, we ni mchai wa kawaida unaingia, satanist, unaingia kwenye ulimwengu wa roo, ukipa. Ngoja usiku tusikutana kwa sababu ukipa na mini pae na tukutane. Tutakata ile waya kule. Hautarudi kwenye mwili. Hapa kutarudi mmoja. Na najua nani ambaye atarudi. Nataka uelewe ya kwamba Yesu ametutuma duniani. Ametutuma kipindi hiki. Mimi nawaambia tu kweli ya kwamba Yesu ametutuma. Na ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba kila ametutuma naye hatuwezi kufa naye. Lazima tuifikishie wale watu ambao wameteswa. Mtu anawekewa jini inakuwa ugonjwa kwenye maisha yake. Anawekewa jini ina manifest kama ukimwi. Unakubali kwamba nina ukimwi unaanza kufa polepole. Eh? Wewe una, unaekewa jino, una, ina, inatokea kama kansa, ikipigwa picha inatokea kama kansa. Na kumbe hakuna kansa, unakubali kifo, kifo inaanza kufanya kazi kwenye maisha yako. Wewe unakubali ya kwamba una asma na hakuna asma. Ni vile tu kwamba umechanganywa kidogo ukapigwa uh, na watu hiyo. Tatizo kubwa tulionayo ni watu wanaotolewa kwenye miili yao anaenda kufanyishwa kazi. 
mtu anakuta kwamba nyinyi mnaanga mtu amekuwa amekuwa kama wazimu tu na kumbe si yeye aliondolewa na jini ikapandikizwa kwenye huo mwili na sasa kile kinachoishi kwenye huo mwili ni jini si mtu mwenye mwili haya mambo yote tutapambana nayo this is episode 1 we are coming with with episode 2 of overcoming death and when we come we are going to delve deeper we are going to speak pani iko nini situpatane huko kwenye ulimwengu wa roho tupambane huko kiumani kwa sababu Yesu wakati ambao alinitokea <laughs> alinipatia some instructions na hapo mahali ambapo tunaelekea Kenya unajua umeona wahubiri Kenya umeona wahubiri lakini ndio tumeanza hivyo wahubiri wale ambao umeona wale wahubiri ambao umeona kwa kiwango kile ambacho umeona ni wazuri na wamefaliza kazi ya kiwango chao sasa tumepanda kwenye kiwango kingine hiki kiwango chenye tumeingia ndani yake Kenya Hujaona <laughs> wahubiri wa aina hii. We are coming na njia yenye ni tofauti sana. Kwa sababu we cannot agree a, a country cannot have majority of the people that are reason up being wale ambao ni ulimwengu wa ngiza na we expect that kama things are going to move properly the way they should move. So we have to pray. We have to declare the things that uh, pertain to the kingdom of God in prayer and we are going to see what god is going to do for us today so can we pray now do you want to use the keys of the kingdom your life depends on how you use the keys of the kingdom to overcome death let's pray pray together with me father in jesus name i rise up against death in the name of jesus christ and i rise up against the angels of death I rise up against those who have made a covenant with death and they are alive today because of an agreement they have with hell and they are propagating things that pertain unto hell and death in the name of Jesus Christ I bind the life they live now I crush it in the name of Jesus I declare their covenant with death is broken so death get to them now in the name of Jesus Christ i break it in the name of Jesus Christ i don't i don't care where they are i pursue you now wewe mwenye umefanya angano na kifo angano na kuzimu na unaishi kwa sababu ya angano na mauti sikia mauti ninakuwa muu hiyo angano nimeivunja kwa damu ya Yesu nichukue katika jina la Yesu Kristo nimefungua wale watu ambao wamekaa wakiwa mateka wa watu ambao wamefanya angano na mauti mauti iwe ina watu chukulia watu ninaita watu wale ambao wako kifoni kwa wakati ambao haufai kuwa kwenye kifo ninakuwa mungu toka kwenye mauti njo ingawaje watu wanafikiri ulikufaga ninakuwa mungu njo katika jina la Yesu Kristo come out come in the name of Jesus and get back to the land of the living in the name of Jesus let the person who took you there go there in the name of Jesus Christ father i declare life upon the nation of kenya break the power of death and the power of hell from this nation i pray for your children that they will understand the things that you are speaking to the church today i release the blood of jesus upon the lives of your people open their eyes and their ears let them understand what you are saying to the church today Father we thank you. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. You can give me a call. Speak to us. We are at Ambalal House first floor every Thursday. We have an interdenominational prayer meeting. Teachings. We meet there and we teach the word of God. We seek okay Uki, ukisumbuka na kifo inakusumbua wewe unaangalia kifo unaona kama vile ni kitu kikubwa kifo isipotumwa kwako unaweza ukaishi miaka yako yote na ikitumwa kwako na ujue jinsi ya kuiteka mateka na kuifunga na kuirudishia yule alikuwa ameituma unaweza ukamzika na wewe ukaendelea kuishi kwa nini wakuzike wewe kabla ya wakati wako you have a way of escaping come to us Let us meet together.
Let us pray the right kind of a prayer. Let's invoke the right kind of power. And you will live and not die. And declare the goodness of the Lord or, uh, in the land of the living. So, before you deal with the death, you cannot do anything meaningful. Come on, give me a call. Uh, let me know uh, how you are praying. Let me know what the questions that you have had. And let us deal with them together. Trust me, God has sent me. I know it. I do not need anybody to speak for me. God has sent me. Jesus appeared to me. I know I am from God and I am on my way to God. But as I go, I've happened to know you. You are my friend. Why should you die before your time? And yet God has sent us a message that can preserve you. Come, let us join hands. Let us believe together. Let us move and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Tuvunji angano zao na kifo na mauti. Atutumia fungua ambazo yesu wa matupatia. Na tutaishi. Mwakwambia kwamba I can disappear and appear. If they try whatever foolishness they try with men. We are not men. <laughs> we are not men. We are, we, are, we are sons of God. Sons of God enter into fire. Na wakitoka awanuki moshi. Sons of God enter into a den of lions. And when they come out, I will just scratch you and anything. Sons of God, they drown in the sea and they come out alive after three days. Sons of God, they divide the sea and it becomes a passage not only for themselves but for two million people. Sons of God, they divide the Jordan. Pa! Where is the Lord God of Elijah and the Jordan parts, and they walk on dry land. Sons of God, they eat manna from heaven. Sons of God, they bind witches and they are bound. Sons of God, they kill witches and they are killed. Sons of God, they call the dead back to life and they come back to life. You are blessed. I wish you all the best. Jesus loves you. Any questions? Post them there. Let us answer them together. We are blessed in Jesus' name. Shalom. Never blessed Sunday. Remember, we are meeting there every Thursday, 5.30 in the evening for one and a half hours of seeking the Lord, receiving teachings, and receiving the blessings of God. Karibu. Amen.